y'all. I'm Deborah. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you've seen this look several times already, I'm filming three videos on the same day. So it's not your imagination. It really is happening. Uh, this is my September update for Movie Madness. And so this is a Fantastic Ladies collab project. Um, runs from January 1 to January 1. And basically, whatever fits different movies that you want to watch. Bring something in that reminds you of that movie. For me, I am doing all film noir, um, whether classic film noir or more modern film noir. I tend to stay with the classics because that's kind of the fun of the black and white and the different shades and shadows that we use, or that the, the uh, filmmakers use, um, doesn't necessarily translate well to color film. So I'm tending to use black and white. So to start, I have um, I have three products that were rolling over from last month um, for the movie um, Nightmare Alley. I rolled in a lip pencil in the shade Venom uh, because in this movie the anti-hero accidentally murders someone by poison. So I rolled in the shade Venom. It is a beautiful brick uh, lip pencil. I have used it zero times this month because it's August and August needs pinks. August is still summer. This one will get lots of use when football season starts this month because it goes really well with um, some of my football team colors. All right, so the second product is the Piggy Power. It's for the, um, sorry, it, it is for the movie Witness for the Prosecution. This was a um, movie, it was adapted from a play by um, Agatha Christie. It takes place, most of the action takes place in the in a courtroom in London. So I brought in a product with from uh, Kiate London. This is the Miss Piggy, a Miss Piggy collab for Piggy Power Lipstick. Um, it is not my shade. I'm not sure why I bought it other than I like Miss Piggy and I thought it was pretty. It is a corally pink. Um, I've been trying to use this as a um, cream blush, but I haven't done a really good job with that yet. Um, I have used this. I brought it in for 10 uses. I have used it four times. So hopefully I can get it together and use this six times in the month of September and be done. Um, I've been hadn't holding it in the lipstick box, but I'm gonna move it to the blush box. So maybe I think about it when I'm choosing the blush for the day. All right, so the last product was the Too Faced Setting Powder, and that was for the film Out of the Past, because this was something that had been in a project previously. And my goal was to finish, and I have finished this powder completely. So it is done, and that one is rolling out, which leaves me room to roll in new films. So for this month, I'm going to roll in, I'm going to go ahead and roll in three movies. The first one that I'm rolling in is called The Dark Past. It was filmed in 1948. It starred William Holden, who was at the time a heartthrob. Um, Nina Falk was the uh, the uh, gangster's mom, and Lee J. Cobb was the um, he played a psychiatrist who is he and his family and his weekend guests were held hostage by William Holden's character Al Walker. Al Walker was a murderer, bad dude escaped from prison and murdered the prison warden and he's holding these this family at hostage at a rural cabin while he's waiting for his um, the airboat ride out of whatever rural part of Florida they were supposed to be in. So the premise of this story is that he is he is a complete sociopath, complete psychopath and sociopath. And um, in the pro in the course of the night that he is is spent, he and his um, 
gang have spent holding this family hostage, um, he has had multiple conversations with this psychiatrist that he is holding at shotgun point. Um, in the process, we find out that this character has this recurrent nightmare and that he's he can't sleep, he can't rest, he's completely tormented by this recurrent nightmare. And in this, as the nightmare story unfolds and they begin to interpret what is um, the symbolism within this man's nightmare, um, he it, it's revealed that he was, as a child, as an eight or nine year old, he told the police where to find his father because his father was wanted, a wanted criminal. He was a really bad dude. He was abusive, abused the, the boy, abused his mother. And so this, um, as a child, this criminal had, was responsible for his father's death. And there's this scene where the police come in, the, the father shoots at the police, the police shoot the father. He staggers forward and falls across this table that this boy has taken refuge under to stay out of the fire, out of the, the uh, gunfire. And the father is bleeding onto the table and the blood is dripping onto the child. And he's got his hand up there to try to keep it off. So he has this this recurrent nightmare about an umbrella with uh, a hole in it and he's contained, he can't get away, there are bars. The bars in real life were actually the, the legs of the policeman standing around the table. Um, so as this gets interpreted, um, the, the guy had had some sort of long-term paralysis in this hand that couldn't be explained and it was, it was a psychological reaction from um, trying to block his father's blood from running on him. Um, so very interesting movie, very, very interesting movie. So I was thinking, as I was thinking about products to bring in, I was thinking about um, the recurrent nightmare and this self-destructive behavior because once they figure out what the dream means, then he's no longer able to shoot somebody and he gets arrested and goes off to prison peaceably. So I was thinking about self-destructive because this gentleman was self-destructive. And so I bring, I'm bringing in a, in a product that self-destructed on me. I dropped it on the floor and it blew up. Um, I had to repress several shades in this palette. This is my Tarte Love, Trust, and Fairy Dust palette. Um, I have another shade in here to pan, but I am bringing in one of the shades that has broken and I am bringing in this shade right here. This is a very nice gold um, very light gold shade. It's really nice for inner corner highlight and for kind of dotting in the middle of the lid for an eye low, uh, halo eye look. Um, so I am bringing that one in to pan. So that is for The Dark Past. All right, the second movie I'm bringing in is Kansas City Confidential. This is a classic film noir. If you Google film noir, Kansas City Confidential comes up on every list. It is a classic. Um, this is a heist film. It's a heist story. So it begins with this gentleman who... Um, has gotten out of prison. He's been in trouble with the law, gotten out of prison, has a nice, has a good job. Now he's delivering flowers for a florist, for a floral wholesaler. Um, and the, he's delivering to this florist that is next to a bank. Um, in the course of events, the beginning of the movie, there is a bank robbery that is planned and executed. And the guys have um, uh, jumpsuits, coveralls that look just like his. They're all wearing masks. And about the time that the robbery happens and the getaway car drives off, this gentleman drives off. He's completed his delivery. He drives off as well. So the police are convinced that he is part of the gang. Um, 
and I think, think that at one point they even like steal his car, his truck. I, I forgot. It's been a little while since I watched the movie. Um, but in the course of things, um, the, the members of this group that have robbed the bank have never seen each other face to face. They have always been uh, told to wear masks when they're um, meeting each other. So nobody knows what anything, lo what anyone looks like. And in one year, they are supposed to go to Mexico and meet up and divide the money so that the money would be let everything cool off, everybody get out of town, let the police, the investigation die down, and then split the money. Well, the gentleman who was the florist delivery driver gets arrested for, um, or get, yeah, gets arrested for um, part of this robbery. But they can't, they really don't have anything other than circumstantial evidence. So in the course of things, in trying to clear his name, he finds out who one of the, um, one of the perpetrators was and follows him. This guy gets caught up in a gambling thing and he gets shot and in the, the, um, the young man who's trying to clear his name is there when he's shot and he is able to get some clues. The guy kind of makes a deathbed confession and he takes his place going to Mexico because it's now time to go get the money. He goes to the meeting um, and um, turns out that this has all been orchestrated by a corrupt police officer who had been um, run out of the force. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the story. So to bring in a product for this movie, since masks were involved, I'm bringing in a mask. This is by Andalou. It is their Thousand Roses Rose Water Mask for sensitive skin. And I am bringing this in to pan. I have about this much use on it, so I've used a little less than half. But I am bringing this in here to use up. I'm not terribly great at using masks, but I'm trying to do better. Um, and I really like this one. So I am bringing that one in to pan for the movie Kansas City Confidential. If you've never seen it, I recommend you look at it. It's free on Amazon. You can also find a lot of these movies, um, kind of bootleg versions on YouTube if you look real hard. All right, the last movie I am bringing in is an inter is a full, well, we, we consider them farm films. If you live in Japan, it's not a farm film to you. This one is by the famed director Akira, Kur Akira Kurosawa. He um, is a very famous director from back in the 50s and 60s into the 70s in Japan, made movies that get taught in university classes because of the, the uh, the way that they are filmed and directed. So the movie I'm bringing in is called The Bad Sleep Well. My son recommended this movie to me. Um, you can, <clears throat> I watched it on YouTube. You can find a um, dubbed English dubbed version as well as versions in Japanese with subtitles. And really this movie is about um, people getting in bullied into suicide um, so you have to think the cultural requirements, you know, the cultural um, needs for keeping face or not losing face um, in the in the, in the uh, situations of scandal, um, kickbacks, um, corporate greed. Um, this was filmed in the early '60s, late '50s, and Japan is becoming a an economic powerhouse, a manufacturing powerhouse post-World War II. And so there are uh, there are some um, cultural changes that are reflected in this movie. Um, but a lot of corporate greed, kickbacks, um, multiple suicides to save face. Um, and in this movie, it begins with a wedding. Um, and a wedding of a CEO to his, uh, his daughter is marrying his personal assistant, his, his right-hand man. Turns out that this right-hand man has actually swapped lives with someone. 
his father in real life was the first um, of a series of suicides in order to save face. So he has worked his way up. He has changed lives with someone and worked his way up through the company in order to exact his revenge and bring justice to this situation. Um, he had married the daughter out of, initially had married her out of um, a political will, um, but turns out he really tr does truly love her. Um, she um, loves him as well, but because he is his purpose in doing it was to um, destroy her father, there is some tension there with... Um, he also does not want to take advantage of her. It, it's kind of, it's a very sweet story. And that, that part of the story, that subplot is very sweet. So with the, um, as the story moves on, um, he ends up kidnapping this gentleman who was arrested for fraud. He was going to take the fall for the big wigs and the companies. In the end of it, he ends up being um, murdered. Um, he ends up being hit. His car gets hit by a train. They poured whiskey all over him. He's assumed to be a drunk driver. He dies, and the bad guys get away with it. The bad guys get away with it. Um, so, in, in this movie, the only people who are sleeping well are the bad guys. So, I'm bringing in a product, a bedtime product, or a sleep product. Um, I use lip masks at night, and sometimes I use a, a heavy balm. When it's allergy season, my eyes get watery and irritated during the day, so I'll use a balm at night. I am bringing in the Dr. Paul Paul um, Shea Butter Balm. It can be used lip, skin, cuticles, and beauty finishing. I have no idea what beauty finishing is, but this is it. It is a small smaller than some of their their bigger containers but um it's probably still going to take me a while so this is coming in for the movie the bad sleep well all right so that's a kind of a long three movie introduction but they are great stories i recommend that if you're interested in them at all that you you know they're available on amazon or netflix or hulu uh, most of them are available on um YouTube as well. So watch my stories. If you listen to them, yeah, go watch them and see what you think. All right, guys, that is it for the September update for Movie Madness, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.